Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, after all these weeks, as I live and breathe, is Stephen Pearl. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you? I'm fine. I'm well. I'm on top of the world. Mm hmm. Mm. Did you get oh, yourself a new I'm phone? Like, did you? Boing, boing, boing. Did you get yourself a new phone or something? A new what? A new phone because it looks good. Phone. Huh? Same phone. Same phone. Yeah, yeah. Sounds still a little funky. What's happening with you getting a computer back, Stephen Pearl? Uh, nothing. Zero. Still, uh, nobody can fix it. God, if I were out there, I could probably fix it in a minute and a half. I know. I wish you would. Come well, on all, here, all you got to do, if you can't remember, your problem was you forgot the password, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. So all you have to do is just erase the hard drive, reinstall the operating system, and then it'll ask you to put in t passwords and things like that. That's all you have I to do. I walked right after you said all you have to do is... All you have to do is replace the operating system. Uh -huh. That's the program. Replace that, the computer. Like it's a Windows, right? New table. Huh? It's a Windows machine, right? Yes. And then it has a thing called, uh, 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 well, in, in this case, probably Windows 10, something like that. I don't know what the current is. And you just, you just erase your hard drive and then install the uh, operating system. And okay. then, then you're starting. It's like a brand new machine. Okay, somebody give me a hammer. I'll fix it. Uh, a hammer on some chocolate sauce. You know, it's amazing. The people I have to deal with who have absolutely no ability at technology. Ah, we're just, uh, we're not used to the, we're used to the telephone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you're an old man. We have to account <laughs> for that. I remember I saw Jimmy Hendrix. <laughs> yeah. Have you gotten your shot yet? Nope. But they're giving them away in the apartment building on the 26th. So I may, I just may uh, give in. Oh, don't go do it. Don't don't. I, I, what don't, if I grow another head though, and it doesn't like the same music as me? Do I or, do I look like I grew another head? It could be in the back room. I don't know. You could huh? be like taking it off. I don't know. Well, I, I I I um, I'm fine. I think I think I'm fine. My wife mm -hmm. is still kind of feeling sick from it, but I don't know what that is. Aha! Uh -huh, see, it takes your immune system away. That's what it does. I'm starting a rumor. <laughs> Takes your amuses away and it makes one of your eyes see into the future. Well, guess what they've done today here in New York City? What have they done in New York or City? New York or New York State, rather. New York State. They, they have, they have uh, 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 what, what's the word? Uh, they have let go the last barriers between us and the state approving marijuana legalization. Finally, it's about time. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. You got to know to go to New Jersey to get that shit. Well, they figured that, you see, it took, it took COVID to make them do it. And the reason it took COVID to make them do it was they're broke. <laughs> right? You want a good economy legalized weed. That's all they did in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's dispensaries everywhere. And nobody's walking around like a zombie. Yeah, well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that the, we need the money here in New York State. And this could bring in several, oh, several billions of dollars a year. I don't know how much, but, you know. Uh, but I, I just, I, I, I'm, it's not like I smoke a lot of pot or whatever, but I would like to be able to go down to a dispensary and get uh, like a, 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 what do you call it? A, a, a pre-roll, a vape, an edible. A vape, a vape. A vape, baby. Vape. See how out of it I am today? Hey, hey, hey. I need one of those roofers. Those uh, jazz I, I got to get those roofers. I get those rumors, and then you eat them, and you get high, and you start hallucinating. So anyway, last night, last night I had nothing to do. So late at night, what do I do? I go over to YouTube, and everything you ever wanted to see or find is on YouTube. I Literally. don't care what it is. I can find me doing stuff I don't remember I did. You uh -huh. know. 
uh, uh, on there. But I, w I went looking for stuff. And what I came across is suddenly I realized, like, here's a question for you. When you were a kid, who was the first comic that ever made an impression on you that you truly loved as a child, as a child, not as an adult, child. but as a child. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so who was it? Do you remember? There was Soupy Sales and Sandy Becker who were on both on television. These were on York. television, yeah. Yeah, they, on they had kids shows, and I absolutely loved them. And there was something, what was it about Soupy Sales that appealed to you as a he, kid? He as funny, a I liked the pie fights, I liked the, uh, I just, I, he was just, Hello, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't worry about it. You're fine. Just don't touch anything. Oh, boy. There we go. Now you turned yourself off. Okay, hold on. I'm not going anywhere. Don't, don't, on. don't touch anything. Yeah. Don't touch back? anything. Everything's fine. Don't touch anything. There we go. You're off again. Uh, you know, t t you wait a second. Wait a second. God, yeah, yeah. Wait, folks. Just I don't wait. know what happened. I, 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 I have no... This. This is you here. Come yeah, on. There you go. Now don't touch anything. Hey. Don't touch any. Get your hand out of the way. Don't touch anything. Hey, I notice came on. I got rid of it. Okay, just don't even pay attention to notices that come up. Just avoid them. Pay no attention to the man in front of the it's New York City. Some, it's probably something has to do with something else on your iPhone. Don't have there anything to do with it. Just, just keep your fingers off that screen. <laughs> I saw a nice picture. <laughs> anyway, so it was soupy. Oh, sa it was summer. soupy sales. What, as a kid, appealed uh, appealed to you with soupy sales? It was funny. He had the puppets, and he had uh, he got hit with a pie. And uh, God, the show was so big. Even Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack came on to get hit with pies. It was huge, <laughs> and I loved it. And the, and in 1965, they sent me away to camp for a month, and I had nervous breakdowns and panic attacks, so they couldn't watch soupy sales. They almost wheeled the TV just so I could watch it. Well, I go back further than you. So I have to reference what I used to like uh, in movies and then in early television, okay? Because we got mm -hmm. our first television, I think, in 1951. Wow. Okay. And I come across these things on YouTube, and I suddenly realized what an impact one particular comedian had on me when I was a kid. And I, you know, I'd like to think it was Jack Benny, but I listened to Jack Benny on radio, but I didn't really get to like him until later on. Mm -hmm. I began to realize his value, and you know, every week I would listen to the Jack Benny show, but I, right. didn't, I didn't think of him in the same way that I thought of this one guy. And it was amazing to me when I watched it last night, the memories that washed back over me, not as a teenager, not as an adult, but as a child, okay? And that was Jimmy Durante. Acha, cha, 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 cha. I don't know what it was about Durante, but I absolutely adored him. He was, oh, like, he was extremely likable. He was the dysfunctional uncle, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? He was, he was a member of every family. There was just yeah. something about uh, Durante that was just, un, you know, was so likable. Yep. And I loved him as a child. I thought he was funny, and I loved him, and I wish he was my uncle, you know. Uh, so that was, uh, that was my... So I, I spent some time with Durante yesterday. Uh. And they had this one thing where he was doing a number with a bunch of other people. One of them was Johnny Ray, who most people will forget completely. Okay. Then there was George Raft. Okay. Liberace. Yeah. Who else? There was one other. Uh, and they all did this song and dance number, and then each of them took a turn dancing. Mm -hmm. Who do you think blew them all out of the water? Jimmy. Da, cha, 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 cha. No. Look at these flying feet. <laughs> nope. Not him. Nope. Who you you had you had now? Let me see if I got it right here. You had uh, you had Liberace, you had mm -hmm. uh, oh yes, Peter Lawford, oh, jo God. George Raft, Jimmy Durante, and uh, I think that that was it. Maybe Durante, and then there George was, Raft could dance. I know that, but uh, I know Liberace. The one that that just danced rings around them was George Raft. 
Well, Raff, yeah. Now, well, and when I point. say George Raff, folks, there most people, even the older ones watching me right now, don't remember George Raft. Don't touch that screen. <laughs> <laughs> they forget. They 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 don't remember George Raft. Uh, you well, know, he just he, he well he didn't make that big an impression on Hollywood. You he know. was friends with Ben Siegel, Mr. Ben Siegel, the man who invented Las Vegas. Well, when they did the movie, uh, what was it, Cotton Club, there's mm -hmm. this guy played by uh, Richard Gere, who mm -hmm. is a gangster, kind of, and he knows the gangsters, and then he goes to Hollywood and becomes a big movie star. Mm -hmm. And that was really based on George Raft. He yeah. had been associated with a lot of the really bad guys, like in Murder Incorporated and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's scary. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but George Raft just danced rings around him. I was just, I was just a, I knew he was good because he, his first big movie, I think it was a picture called Bolero in which he did wow. dance, you know? So I knew that he had, had some chops for dancing. And I, then Peter Lawford was really good. And the reason he was good was because he worked at MGM and he had to do musicals. So they taught yeah, him how to dance. Yeah. Right? Liberace was okay. Liberace could uh, had a few uh, steps in him. I did my best, but my strength lies in my fingers. Uh, uh, um, uh, Johnny Ray again. How many here know who Johnny Ray was? I'll wait. I do. I I'll do. Wait. If you're free, free. This, was, this, was guy, this was this was a guy. This was a guy who didn't sing too well, but you excused him because he had a hearing aid. You're the size of a toaster. <laughs> yeah, it was like, right? A it, big, big old, it wasn't even like a little thing you couldn't see. Like, well, in yeah. those days, in those days, they didn't have what we have today with the technology where you put the earphones in and then you stick them in your ear and then there's a little antenna coming out and, yeah. uh, and you can hear good with them, all right? In yeah. those days, it was an earplug and then this thing you put on your chest, which was like a giant <laughs> speaker. You look like something Jeez. out of... <laughs> out of, you look like a Dalek out of Doctor Who, you know. Uh, and and uh, he, uh, Johnny Ray was deaf. So you went, well, he may not be a good singer, but he's deaf. He doesn't know he can't sing. Yeah, he <laughs> can't help it. What's Fabian's excuse? He can hear. He didn't last too long, did he? Who? Johnny Ray? Johnny Ray. Yeah, no, he came and went. I think it was about, about a week and a half or something like that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at it's least Johnny Ray week. Enjoy it because it's going to go quick. At least Fabian had a career for several years, and he made. Yeah, they did. They put him in movies. They yeah. did this with him. They did he that with he him. was okay in movies. Hey, yeah, he's a good-looking guy, you know. The camera liked yeah. him, but he couldn't sing for shit. Once he opened his mouth, it was over. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, it's horrible. He sang in the key of D minus. He was bad, bad, very bad. I cool. think what very he did is he sang, and then they adjusted the uh, the background music to him. Oh, yeah, because it was yeah. different keys. Yeah, yeah. Multi-key. He's yeah. multi-keyist. Yeah. Today, today you can take a terrible singer, and you can make him sound good. Oh, sure. It's like, wow, 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 wow. What's it called? Effects. It's called auto-tuning. Yeah, it's horrendous. Yeah. yeah. So you could Cheat. do... It's cheating. It is cheating. There's no yes. question about that. It is cheating. It's cheating. Uh, um, but they um, do it all the time now. Yep. Well, I don't listen to it. You know. So you don't know actually who sings well and who doesn't sing well, no. okay? Mm -hmm. So that's that's what's terrible about it. Uh, that's it, right. You know, it just doesn't. Uh, it it it's horrible what's going on. <laughs> you know, technology can make anybody sound good, and what that's they right. do is if you're singing off key, they just simply change your key. That's and, right. Yeah, it's horrible. Know, so it's 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 it is horrible. You know, I, I was listening to some recordings of Sinatra the other day. Then he would go into a studio and he would only work with the orchestra around him. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he really wanted to uh, 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 play with the orchestra. He loved having an orchestra, a live orchestra yeah, sure. in the studio. And he would then go, I, I heard one thing where he did five takes of a song. And I'm going, you know, why didn't they just take the first part, which was good, then take the second part from another one and glue them together. He wouldn't do that. Frank he, was a craftsman. He wanted a complete live performance to be what Strike. wound up on disc, you know, so. Um, it, it, Darn tootin'. Yeah, so amazing. 
But uh, so everything's good out there in Las Wages. Good. I got my jaw all it was all messed up before, but it's okay now. I, 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 I. How much? And I filmed the commercial last week, so uh, they'll be showing it soon. Yep. Commercial for what? For a lawyer, for Anthony Paglia, injury attorney. And I played a slimy insurance salesman. Well, we're not paying you nothing. Zero book is. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, and it's a local commercial, I trust. Yeah, it's a local commercial. It's going to be yeah. fun. It's going to be seen on CBS. So Ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, the lovely, the attractive, you always love him, and you love seeing him at your favorite comedy club when they were open. When they were open, yes, yes. It's, I played a club in Alabama called I Don't Get It. That was one of my favorites. So. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, he's called Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. It's always good to see you and all my tens of fans. Okay. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Uh, good evening to all of you uh, out there. Uh, and uh, I think I'm ready to go tonight. Uh, uh, every night before I go on the air lately, I've just been going, I just can't do it tonight. I just can't do it tonight. And then I just force myself to do it, and we do it, and... Uh, it usually turns out to be a pretty damn good show. But the, you know, the important part of this program is you calling and being a part of what we call the citizen panel. Uh, and you do that by simply going, the easiest way to do it is you go to gabnet.net, gabnet.net, that's our uh, web page. Over on the right-hand side, there is a um, uh, uh, thing that says, click here to Zoom us. Okay, and then you go over there and click on it, and you zoom us. Wait a minute, let me see if I can find it, just so you can see it, and so I can point it out to you. Okay, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, here we go. Um, let me see here. I actually, I, I don't want to do that, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, so you'll get to see the whole screen here. But uh, what I'm talking about is like right here. You see, uh, right, uh, well, let me go right here. See right here, right there, see? It says click here to join us at show t uh, at showtime on Zoom. And you just click that, and it doesn't matter whether you have Zoom in there or not. The fact of the matter is, uh, if you don't have Zoom in your computer, it'll still take you there and put you on, okay? So please, please be my guest and, uh, and do it, all right? Uh, because uh, the more people we have who are new and different, uh, the better the show is. And the more people we have, the more robust the conversation becomes. And, uh, you know, good time to call right now because most of the people don't start calling till about on the hour. Because a lot of times I don't start really going to the citizen panel until then. But I do have two people who are waiting in the citizen panel. So it would probably do me well to go to them rather than to uh, 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 avoid them here. Hold on a second. Let me just, uh, first I've got to, um, I've got to go to Zoom panel. First of all, I've got to admit all. All right, fine. And then, see, I mean, I'm getting to the point where I can't remember how to do any of this stuff. There we go. There's our, uh, our first couple of people. There's Robert Natali, and there is, of course, the... Uh, Ever popular Charlie Wallace, or as we know him, Doctor Doom. Wait, hold uh, on, hold on, on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold God, on. God, you're hold losing, on. You're I, I got to be better prepared. You're, you're losing your touch, Robert. I am. Uh, I am. Hold on. Hold right. on. Is hold on. Been, okay, as he's better known. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'd be fired, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, no way you're going to be my partner on any show. I'll tell you oh. that right now. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Admit Alan. He's coming on here. Um, uh, uh, and uh, also admit uh, Jeffrey Stein, who's coming on here. All right. Okay. When Dr. Doom is finished, I have a Johnny Ray story, actually. Oh, okay. Johnny oh. Johnny Ray. Uh, we're, we're, it, it, I mentioned Johnny Ray to Stephen Pearl, and that's yep. a name most people don't know. When yeah, we are George Raft, I knew. George Raft, you knew. Wow. Yeah. You knew George Raft, but you didn't know Johnny Ray. 
<laughs> well, actually, George Raff was better known because he was in a lot of movies you may have seen him, like TCM or someplace like yeah. that. You know, whereas Johnny Ray's uh, uh, was a uh, had a uh, he had a b very big success for about a week and a half, and that yeah. was about it. So, anyway, he was a, a couple of hit wonders, uh, as we call him. Uh, yeah, anyway, Charlie, uh, in your capacity as Doctor Doom, what's the count and the amount today? Uh, we lost twelve hundred and forty-nine Americans today. Oh, we we were down uh, below nine hundred yesterday, weren't we? I know it. Uh, it's gotten worse. I think we may be hitting that uh, post spring break surge. Well, I don't... the count is up for infections too. We had sixty-seven thousand new infections today. Wow. Wow. So, so that means yeah. that well, that could be. It, I don't think that's because of spring break, because we're just a couple of days away from spring break, and it takes longer than that for the infection to really grab hold. Yeah, I would say so. Texas has been holding up their end of the bargain. <laughs> yeah. You know? Anyway, 547,000 deaths, uh, dead Americans now. How many? 540,000. Ah, I need my glasses. 546,352. Okay. All right. Yeah. In fact, uh, I could have told you here because you've got it up there. Well, the current total, well, we had new yeah. infections. Yeah, yeah, total is that. And then the deaths were uh, 546,000. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, not good. We're over 30 million total COVID cases now. Yeah. Well, Marjorie was still sick today. And then, wow. then as the day went on, she got better. So, uh, and now she seems to be out of the woods uh, and her temperature is, you know, within the normal range. So, uh, so, so here's what you need to know about Johnny Ray. Oh, okay. Uh, John, we Johnny... let, me, let me explain for a second here. Okay. The audience who doesn't know <clears throat> what, the, what the hell we're talking about. Okay. Let me bring Jeffrey Stein in here, uh, the car thief. Um, uh, uh, Johnny Ray was a singer back in, I think it was about 1955. Yeah, about then. There. And uh, I, how I'm trying to remember when he was, was when one of my favorite co comedic artists, Stan Freeberg, did a parody of him. That's, that's right? right. And that was about in the mid 50s. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Johnny Ray was this singer. Who had a, a, one thing we always noticed is he was hard of hearing. And he had a uh, a hearing aid, and in those What'd days, you say? Uh, yeah, in those days the hearing aids, okay, were big, giant things yeah. in your ear, and then this box that was on the front of you, you kind of, as I said earlier, you look like a Dalek from Doctor Who, you know, and um, uh, everybody kind of forgave Johnny Ray that he didn't sing too well because we figured how could he sing if he couldn't hear himself, you know. So, but he only lasted a short time. Thank God, because he was just god awfully terrible. Yeah. Okay, so Johnny Ray, um, who you're right, a lot of people made fun of because he had a distinctive voice, which could be very grating, at least in my opinion. Yeah. But in any case, he was involved in a long time illicit affair with the columnist Dorothy Kilgallen. Wow. who was a regular yeah. analyst on What's My Line, my line. With John Daly. Right. Now, she was a columnist. The reason why it was an illicit affair is because she was wow. married at the time that this was all going on. And then um, I read all this in Dorothy Kilgallen's biography. Now, why the fuck would I ever read Dorothy <laughs> Kilgallen's biography? Because Dorothy Kilgallen was found dead under yes. some very suspicious yes. circumstances. Yes, absolutely. They claimed on the official, you know, death warrant that she died of a combination of alcohol and barbiturates, but many, including the biographer, hold that she had dirt on the Kennedy assassination yes. that she was about to come forward with. In mm -hmm. fact, she had just interviewed Jack Ruby. Wow. And so many feel that she was removed, shall we say. Removed from the equation. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, yeah. And so Johnny Ray was having an affair 
with Dorothy Kilgallen. Long standing. Who, if anybody ever, anybody here know who Dorothy Kilgallen was? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Oh. Okay. Because a lot of people remember her from like the <clears throat> What's My Line. Well, What's My, my line, line reruns. But she yeah. was she was a major columnist here in in, yes. in in New York. Yes. Now we have somebody here that's trying to get on named Kit Tyro. Does that sound legit to you? Here, I'm going to have hey, hey, turn your mic down, will you, please, Alan? I can. It, 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 God. It, it's horrible. Man. Just horrible. I got to figure out how to keep this down. Yeah. Yeah, it's distorted. Yeah, yeah went, but went up again. I don't know what's with this stupid thing. Yeah, you got to bring it down. Great deal there. Okay. Let me see. Kit Tyro. Okay, I've got to be ready to get rid of Kit Tyro as soon as possible. Okay. Let's see what Kit Tyro is. Okay, if I don't see, oh, oh, there. <laughs> I was going to guess it was John. John, <laughs> John, turn yourself sideways, please. Where are, where are you? I'm in a Vietnamese restaurant in the Tenderloin. Oh, you're in a Vietnamese restaurant in the Tenderloin. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> see, I got my. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, uh, well, get the napalm beef. Okay. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, very, oh, it's very popular. Very popular. Uh, yeah. But you don't put down Kit Tyro. Then I don't know who you are. And then I'm afraid you're somebody. I'm going to go to you and there's going to be two people screwing on the screen. You know? <laughs> yeah. I was my, I'm on my phone. That's why I got to change the name. Oh, I see. Okay, no. well, that's all right. Hello, Brian. How are you? Yeah, hello. This how evening. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm always tired. I'm always tired. Do you think that's just COVID fatigue? I mean, is that why you're all red? I'm not all red. <laughs> See, I can do away with that, but then I get terribly white. All right. Then you look sickly. Yeah, let me see here. See, here's what I can do. See, I can I can do this, and then I get rid I get rid of the red. You see, yep. right? Okay. See, but I like having the orange there a little bit because it, uh, you know, it uh, it makes me it looks better. But uh, the fact is that the problem is is that the uh, uh, the lights are bright, and I get really crazy when the light is too bright. Okay, but anyway, uh, why like am I doing everything. this? Because 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 uh, uh, Alan complained. By the way, I get a lot of letters about you, Alan. There's some you after there are some listeners out there can't stand you. I know. Yeah. So I, I sent you a message after the show last night. I see you haven't seen it yet. Uh. uh what, what did you say? Uh, you, uh, I sent you a message in instant messenger. I'll send it in text next time. Oh, oh okay. All right. Now here comes Tony. Here comes Tony. Oh, I gotta, I gotta talk with Tony about something too. But here comes Tony. Okay. There we are. Hello, Tony. Yo. How are you? Connect your audio, Tony. There you are, Tony. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Yeah. Bye bye. I, I I have a I have a beef to something to argue with you about. Mm. What did I do? What did you What did you do? Well, you always do something that just that absolutely <laughs> annoys the. No, um, Ooh, you okay. wrote somebody wrote something on the, the uh, Scott K. Now who's Scott K? Do I know who this is? Well, let's see what happens if I hit Scott K here. Let's see who we get. Do we get anybody? I don't see any hear any audio yet. Oh, there's Scott oh. K. Oh. Oh, it worked. Okay. Hello, Scott. How are hey. you? Good. How are you? Where are you, where are you calling from? Actually, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And I know there's never a shortage of people for Ohio for some reason. We, yeah, so. we do have people in Ohio. Yeah. 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 I'm, in, I'm in Northeast Ohio, so I'm in Canton. And where are you, Scott? Uh, uh, Josh? Uh, I live a little south of Columbus. Columbus, yeah. yeah. And uh, anybody else here in Ohio? No. Not tonight. Dan, Dan, well, Dan's from Ohio. Yeah, yeah, well, Dan's from Ohio, but he isn't calling, so he doesn't no. count. Right. Uh, right. And then, yeah, and then you have a regular on the Monday show that's from Ohio. The guy he, with yes. glasses, the kind of funny guy. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, uh, w welcome to our program, Scott. Thanks. Good, good to have you here. I'm uh, one of the lurkers that you complain about that never call in. I finally okay. got the nerve to call in. Well, finally, we get a <laughs> lurker to call. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, first of all, Tony, the other day on the Facebook page or something, you wrote some, and then you wrote, mm -hmm. "I just love the Justice League movie." I like the four hour. Can I watch it? It is the biggest piece of crap I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, Let me explain why. But it goes into the, the backstory. Uh, so you might hit the backstory. Like, we need to see Bruce Wayne's parents get killed one more time. <laughs> How many times has that I've... been done in movies? But you saw like a little bit of well, they he changed the oh, origins. Oh, side. oh, oh! It's wonderful. Yeah, he changed the origins, right? But, but, but I liked how you saw him bury the uh, what you would call it, the capsules, and you saw more how they came together, though. I no, the it. the th most horrible thing about this picture is, is that I hate these movies these days where the action sequences make no sense whatsoever. You know what I don't like? He does, Alex. Why does he do the slow motion all the time? I like it with yeah, the flash. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, like the, it's the it, the flash is a guy who moves yeah, faster than you can see yeah. him, right? Yeah. And yet, every he's time they go to the every too. time they go to the flash, going through his fast speed, it's like slow motion. Shouldn't it be really fast? You know, that movie that movie sucked. Just sucked. It was four hours of my life wasted, and believe me, at my age, I don't want to waste four hours. It was, yeah, it was actually had. I want, you know what it is? My brother was watching. He said, you got to watch it. So I was watching it in parts, and then I would go back to it. Yeah, I, I watched it in parts too. I mean, but I went back. And I watched the original version, and at least it made more sense. I liked it though, because I like to see more of the story, like how they got together. Though and the only thing I liked in the whole film is Wonder Woman. You know, she's good as Wonder Woman. I like, and I also Lois like. Lane isn't bad either. What'd you say? Lois Lane isn't bad either. Amy <laughs> Adams, yeah. Amy Adams, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, oh, no, you know, the only trouble with Wonder Woman is is, is you never see um um oh, what do you call it? Uh, Tits? No. Uh, <laughs> I guess you can hear me now. I think I was having problems earlier. I just... I, I probably should just give up doing this show. I can't remember anything anymore. <laughs> Of Wonder Woman, not the plane. Huh? What was the part of Wonder Woman that you like? Uh, you, you know, when, when oh. you can see the cleft. You didn't uh, say it. We're well, adults. Well, I'm trying to remember the term for it. Um, that's how out of it I am tonight. Vagina? No. Please. I know it's a vagina, but when you see it and somebody's wearing something and you can see the... Oh, camel toe. A camel toe, right. <laughs> And the Amer and I know what the guy version is. I know what the guy version is. Anybody know what the guy version is of a camel toe? No. Anybody? Really? Oh, a moose knuckle. Moose knuckle. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gotta look that up. Yeah. Hey, hey, the crazy horse is open. The crazy horse is open. What's the crazy yeah. horse? It's it's the stripper club next to the Warfield. I'll take. I'm going over there right now. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. How far are they let you go in with the camera? I don't think so. Well, he's <laughs> he, he's down, he's down in the Tenderloin, and that used to be like Skid Row. That was like where can is you, that? Can you, the Tenderloin? It, 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 this is this is where I work right here, the Warfield. Warfield, yeah. The Warfield Theater. Yeah. Yeah. You know, crazy you, horse. You, you, that's oh, something. Wait a minute. That's something you have in common with my father. My father worked the war field. Really? But he was in the orchestra. Wow. In the old that's days cool. when they had shows there. Yeah. See, you have to. Um, you have to go to the. To the uh, mask is required for entry. Yeah. At the. Uh, that's what the thing. But it doesn't and look like it, it. doesn't look like it's open. Okay, yeah, it is. Can I want to say hi? No, okay. I don't want to say hi. Oh, okay, I was gonna, I was gonna say hi to the girl behind the counter. Oh, well, go in, go on in, go on in. We're, okay. we're, she's we're... coming up to the door. Mm. Oh, bounced out. Hi. Of oh. Hi. How are you? Do, 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 do you uh, remember? Oh, okay. Do, I'm not recording. You're live. <laughs> You're live on the uh, Alex Bennett show. You remember the Alex Bennett show? Oh, okay. She doesn't know. She doesn't know who we are. Sorry. He's the police. Okay. Watch out. That's who we are. <laughs> I'm like the official now. 
Well, we were certainly <laughs> welcome back in my hometown, weren't we? Yeah. No, she, yeah, she got mad. <laughs> She's probably 18 years old. She doesn't. Do you remember work. who? You remember Alex no, Bennett? You. Who? <laughs> yeah. oh, Ask well. who the president is. <laughs> See if you know. There's he a, used to be huge in this town. There was a time when you wouldn't get a, a, a response like that. So, how's everything in yeah. Ohio, Scott? What's happening in your neck of the woods? You're you're where again in in Ohio? I'm Canton, Ohio, Pro Canton. Football Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I hate to say this, but I actually work for the state health department in infectious disease. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I I won't say a lot. Probably get in trouble, but yeah. So I'm kind of. Would worried. I be? Would I be? Speaking out of line, if I said that, uh, well, I don't know. How is it in Ohio? Are they a little more respectful of the disease, or are they like... Oh, no, no, no. No. It, it depends where you live, Yeah. honestly. I mean, it's such a split state, and people still associate the mask with the liberal side, and I can't wear a mask because that means I'm with them. It's still... There's a lot of contention still in Ohio. Wow. So, and it's... I mean, we just had a... Actually, pretty close to where I live a restaurant that sued because he, you know, he didn't want to wear masks and he just lost. So they, they have not worn masks at all since they've been open um, since last year and wow. he lost. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. Well, um, was that a, uh, a hot spot for COVID that restaurant? It must've been. <laughs> well, it's out in the middle. It's not where a lot of population is, but I assume it may. Have all been. you need is one population. Yeah. To cause a whole problem, you know. But I work in HIV and STD, and I work with people that do contact tracing for that, which we've done for decades. And suddenly now well, it's important they, because it, it, of COVID. I don't remember them ever doing contact tracing for STDs, and if they did... Oh, yeah, syphilis and HIV really? and gonorrhea. That's funny. Then how come my door never got knocked on? <laughs> yeah. Imagine you were intertwined by a lot of people. Wait a second, this name keeps popping up. Yeah. So I, I worked in STD for 27 years. Let's see. He has syphilis, huh? Let's check Alex Bennett. Yeah, yeah I can look you up on a database. Oh, but... go right ahead. <laughs> I could put in a request for what, California, New York? Yeah, I don't think. Oh. I, I think I'm okay. 1965 is the last time he had VD. You don't yeah, well, those are paper <laughs> records, then. We don't have those. 1960, when was the last time I had VD? Huh. I, I, longer than that. No, not 1965. No, later than that. When did I get... See, what happened was, when you used to get VD in... Uh, when you used to get, like, gonorrhea is what we're talking about here. Uh, here today, gonorrhea. Uh, we... we uh, it used to go down to the health department because it was the cheapest place to go and it was usually the only place open on the weekends. And they would see you and then they would give you a shot and send you on your way, They'd test you and send you on your way. One day I, I go down there because I got a, something that's happening down in that area and I go in and they, they call me into the uh, examination room and the doctor says, listen, would you like to do us a great favor? I'm thinking... What, what kind of favor? I'm here because I've got the collab, right? Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, we have a bunch of Japanese students here yeah. who uh, are finding out how to do an inspection, you know, or do an examination. Uh, would you be willing to let them come in and look at me do your examination? Really? And I said, I thought to myself, and I went, I've never been able to give back to science. <laughs> But here's here's my here's my chance, okay? So how old were these guys? Don't will you stop it? I'm telling a story. You're ruining my timing, okay? <laughs> Sorry. So I say, sure, send them in. Twenty five Japanese students oh walk in, and they're all st staring at my dick, <laughs> while yeah. this doctor does whatever he has to do. So I, if, if they got if they lowered the rate of gonorrhea in this country, it was my doing. You know, I did three, my part. Three or four of them still stay in touch. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was hilarious. I mean, I, I thought it'd be like one or two guys, you know, that would come in and sure, let them look. 
25 of them. And they've all got, oh, by the way, they've all also got cameras with them. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, way they can take, that way they can take the picture at home and blow it up. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. So to speak. Yeah, yeah. So, to speak. Yeah. so, um, so they use it. Hey, listen, it's interesting. Today they uh, they showed, uh, this guy showed up in court, the guy who killed the 10 people. Uh, and uh, he, they, they said they need extra time to make a, a plea. And they say because he seems to have mental problems. No, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, is is this something? Is this something you have to explain to people? You know, you go into a, <laughs> yeah, right. You go into your, uh, into your, uh, into a supermarket, and you shoot ten people to death, and then you take your clothes off. He did that. That was the other thing he did. He took his clothes off after he had done that. That made good sense. Uh, right? Well, it may, he may have done it. He may have done it because he wanted wanted the cops to see that he wasn't armed at that point. Yeah. What, what is all that noise? Uh, it's what? What the hookers in an argument? Just riffraff. Give me money. Hi. How you doing? Hey guys. We're live with the Alex Bennett show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take care. <laughs> More people that are confused. And on the street. Yeah. So you, you wanted an audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, where was I? Oh, he skipped his clothes. Oh, off. yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. I think do you have to tell? Do you have to off. tell people that somebody's crazy? Yeah. When they kill ten people like that, you know. And well, they got to get the psychiatrist to what, confirm it. Well, no, but what I what I what I find ridiculous about that is when they say, "Well, you can't use that as a defense." What do you mean? Does this mean then that killing ten people in a grocery store or a supermarket is a sane action? <laughs> exactly. That it's yeah. the perfect example of sanity. <laughs> you know, of course, the guy was crazy. Anybody who does something like that is nuts on some level. Am I right or wrong, Alan, Mr. Gun uh, Guy? I agree. I agree. You know. I agree. If he only killed nine, mind. then he wouldn't be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know. It was not, sad. It was, not a, it, it sad. was not a good day for white people, okay? <laughs> or to be in Colorado. Yeah. There, there wasn't a single racial element there. I think they were all just real white people. The, am I right? That got killed. Yep. Yeah. So he has a uh, a Pakistani or something surname. He he was yeah he was Pakistani something, and the family said he wasn't right in the head. You know he always had a bad attitude about people and he was always combative and he he had a real pro he had real problems. And then he goes into a gun shop and buys himself a, a you know a rifle. Uh, oh, everybody's trying to... Oh, I see what's happening here. I suddenly have all these people that are, uh, are calling the program. And, oh, I don't want to admit them. Oh, what, why did I admit him? I don't want to admit him. Uh, I'll get rid of him as soon as he shows up. Let me remove. Okay, One remove. One of my fan clubs. Yeah. And remove... Uh, here we go. Oh, no. Remove, remove. Wait a minute. Remove. Uh, and then, remove. Okay. Uh, remove. And buys hey, that was clean. Yeah. What? That was clean. She had clothes on. She had clothes <laughs> on. I see. Hold on a second. I'm I get it. Ray, but Maria right. Elena, I got to remove. Okay. I, I don't want to report that to Zoom either. Let's see here. Who are some of the other names? Romero, uh, remove remove this person. Wait a minute, there's so many of them that I don't know if I have time to remove them all. Okay, remove. Uh, and I go, uh, okay. yeah, you guys can keep talking while I do this. This should take the better part of the hour. Well, I won't. Uh, what, 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 are, are we getting the questions from Robert? We haven't done that in a couple Yeah, we haven't done that in a while. Oh, Larkin's there. He, he just changed uh, from his phone to his whatever. 
Oh. Here's Dior, uh, Delor, uh, Dante's Boyo. These are some terrible names they're using here. <laughs> they're just uh, 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 Gambino Silva. Um, and remove that. And to get rid of him, let's see here. Uh, Robert Willen, remove him. Remove him. Uh, Actually, hey, Tony. Did, mm -hmm. did you hear what uh, his plan was after Justice League? What, what he was going to do? You know, I didn't hear. My brother was telling me that they think he had personal issues with the company. So I don't know if he's doing anything for Marvel. No, oh, but he, he, he was, his plan was Batman was going to die. Superman oh. and Lois Lane were going to have a kid. And that kid was going to become the next Batman. That's See, what his plan he, was. That was his plan? Okay, but That was his really, plan. Yeah, but it's a question of whether DC lets him do that. Yeah, no, they probably won't. You know, because you know what you what you can't do unless you get their permission is screw with the characters. All right, you know, or with the history of those characters. So, anyway. you know, the problem I had was when they came up to Joker. Oh, and yeah. it wasn't Joaquin Phoenix. Right. Oh, do you like that? It wasn't Joaquin. Know, it, it, was like it wasn't Joaquin Fee. Fee. It you wasn't the Joker, you know, and we we sort of see him as the Joker now. It wasn't you know? Joaquin Phoenix. Right, I know. So it, was, it was uh Jared Leto, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. also an alternate reality though, because Flash broke that timeline when he did You know, that. I think I'm most not. people here tonight do not care about what we're talking about. <laughs> I do, but yeah. yeah. I know you do, and it you looks like are. Scott kind of does. I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, and and Robert is falling asleep. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, let me see here. And uh, John Larkin isn't even there. Okay. He's in the bathroom. Didn't you hear it? Yeah. Uh, did anybody, anybody see Biden today give his press conference? Yes, I did. I heard a little bit. Yeah. What did you think? Did you see it at all, um, uh, Josh? No, I did not. You did not get to see it. Yes, Jeff. I saw it. Yeah, what'd you think? I thought he did very well. Thought I so? Really did. I, he, there's one point I where I listened he, to it. I didn't see it. I was in the car and I, I heard it. Your car or somebody else's? A uh, couple of different cars. <laughs> <laughs> one car. Oh, I'm going to sneeze here. <laughs> Hold on. You keep talking. <laughs> Driving was, yeah. was terrible today. I, I I watched Fox News after uh, Biden, and they were uh, they were saying, "Oh, the press was so nice to him. They were so mean to Trump." And blah blah blah. And <laughs> so that's because Trump always lied and fucking he was an a -hole. Yeah, well, I was watching it, and it's amazing because whenever you go over to Fox, it's like you go into another world altogether. That's right, it's another world. You go into an alternate reality. Uh, and uh, but then again, you know, you could argue that MSNBC is kind of an alternate reality, you know, because yeah, everything a little higher. Everything's fine with Biden. Everything's terrific with Biden. Uh -huh. uh, I I was surprised they weren't making so, enough of the. He had a real fumfer where he kind of lost his thought for the moment, kind of like I do. Okay, it's a function of age, and I'm surprised mm -hmm. they didn't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. Because Fox was all over him saying, oh, wasn't that horrible? Wasn't he terrible today? Yeah. Trying to excuse his behavior down on the border, you know, with the kids and stuff. No, I think he explained it perfectly, you know. I mean, we have to figure out what to do. And we got an onslaught, and we're going to make sure these kids are taken care of because they're kids, and when they're kids, they're our responsibility, you know. And yeah. I thought that was a very nice reply. Yeah. Yes, Alan. So when, when he tripped... The Republicans made a big deal about it, mm -hmm. tripping on the steps. And somebody sent me a oh, joke. Wait a minute. Not <laughs> once, not twice, but three times. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, somebody, a Republican, now uh, forget about Republican. A friend of mine sent me a joke and it said, okay, he, 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 he slipped on the steps. Somebody wake me up when he tries to change the direction of a tornado with a Sharpie pin. <laughs> Oh yes, like, right, I'm, I'm right. The weather thing with the sharpie pin. Well, didn't didn't he also didn't didn't Trump also draw kind of like a penis? Wasn't that kind of like a penis yeah. that he that he drew with the sharpie pen to show right. the, the path of the, the tornado? Hurricane was going to go into Florida or something. Yeah, 
So listen, uh, John Larkin, you just walked out there on the streets of, uh, of the Tenderloin, and uh, you couldn't get anybody to really talk to you, right? No, I could have. Not that hooker. I mean, not that dancer at the play. <laughs> oh, oh, was she a dancer? I uh, well, she. I I had imagined she was working there. I don't know. I never go in there. <laughs> the Warfield is uh, now a strip joint. Oh, it's right next next to the Warfield. It's go. called the Crazy Horse. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, and that's where you were trying for like a hundred years. It used to be a movie theater. Everything but, used to be a movie theater. Yeah. You know, across the street here we have the first movie palace in America. Is that right? And really? it, wow. yeah, and it was bought in. A year into its existence by Roxy, who turned it into a movie palace in somewhere in the 1900s, 1910s, or something like that. And it was a movie theater until the 60s or 70s, and then it was bought by a church, and it's now like, you know, this Bible-thumping uh, uh, religious uh, uh, event. How many mobsters were killed in there? Were killed in where? In the in the theater, what, you know, what, when the mob was big in New York, they weren't big in not in Harlem. Oh, I don't know. Unless you I want, don't know New York. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 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 John. Boy, I'm out of it today. Uh, yes, John. You know who died? Um, Jessica Walters. Play, you know, playing at the uh, Warfield Theater the night that he played there. Who um, died the night that he was playing at the Warfield Theater? Yeah, Natalie Wood. He died. He died at the uh, St. Francis Hotel, though. But he was playing. He had a he had a show at the uh, at the Warfield. Okay, so tell hmm. us. Al Jolson. Al Jolson died. Oh, he died. Oh. He died. Yep. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> he died. He died in San Francisco. Oh God! I didn't at know the, that. At the St. Francis, yeah. Oh really? Oh, yeah. the St. Francis Hotel. Yeah. 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 And then he but was, he was performing. He was performing at the uh, at the Warfield that night. Gee, I wonder if my father was playing violin. Probably. You know, because he used to play with the Pitt Orchestra yeah. during that wow. period of time. Wow. That's cool. Well, uh, Jolson didn't die till the fifties, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody yeah. here remember Al Jolson? Sure. Oh, yeah. okay. You all remember Go Al Jolson? Personally, no. No. It goes on the uh, Walt Warfield too. It what? His ghost haunts the Warfield. It's a haunted theater. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I know because I I've worked there for about uh, you know since the '90s, and you know sometimes in the old days when a band would play a couple nights there, yeah, they would they would have like a security person spend the night in the theater to keep an eye on the equipment because it's an easy place to get mm -hmm. into. Yeah. And I, I about four or five of those people that did that quit and never came back. Just... Well, you know you know what happened to me at the Warfield Theater is my father was playing uh, with the band there, and uh, after the show, I was supposed to meet him there. My mother, I think, may have been with me. I can't remember. It would have had to be because I was a kid. I was like eight years old, nine years old. And then what he would do is he would take me over to the Musicians' Union, and we would go sit at the bar while he drank and I ate beef jerky. But anyway... <laughs> We, uh, 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 he was working a show, and it was, it was Lena Horne. And my father always, whenever he talked about Lena Horne, isn't she gorgeous? I love her, you know? So now I'm waiting for my father to come out, and he is about to come out, but before him, here comes Lena Horne. And I run up to Lena Horne, and my father is now up behind me, and I say, Miss Horn, my father loves you. Oh. <laughs> she was very sweet about it. She was very nice. Oh, that's good. She that's kind good. of patted me on the head and, you know. Probably and, talked and that, about that at Thanksgiving. And that was my meeting with come. Lena Horn. And the rest of my family used to play there, too. Like, my aunt played a harp. Uh, she was a harpist, and she played with the San Francisco Symphony, but, you know, that... Being with the San Francisco Symphony didn't pay full time in those days. So she would work the pit at the Curran Theater where they would do musicals. And then she would play the Warfield when Spike Jones came to town. Now, you all remember Spike Jones, yeah. don't you? Remember yes. the name. And what her bit was is she used to sit there with her harp on stage. And they would do like six shows a day. 
And at the end of this 45-minute show, she didn't ever once touch the harp. She, would, she was knitting through the whole show. <laughs> that was her bit. Knit, knit, knit. And then at the end of the show, she does one glissando and goes back to knitting. Oh, wow. <laughs> and after a week of playing there with Spike Jones, she had a piece of knitting that went all the way across the stage because <laughs> they did like six shows a day at this theater. But she was the uh, she was the harpist with the uh, with the Spike Jones Orchestra whenever they come to town. So, what can I say? Robert's question. Yes, Rob. My father, my father actually once shared a bill with Frank Sinatra. That's a wow. true story. My wow. father and uncle sang as a duet in local nightclubs, including a joint in North Bergen, New Jersey. Called? Frank Sinatra called. was about yeah near Hoboken. Then it was called. Uh, the uh, ah, log shit. cabin, I think, or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah. My uncle, yeah. my uncle's family has the poster. My dad and uncle actually had higher billing because Frank Sinatra, at the time, was about fifteen or fourteen. You know, he was some ridiculously young age. Yeah. And so he was a nobody. But you know, we got we got a lot of mileage out of showing that poster to people. Yeah. Well, oh. I think it was the log cabin where he became well known in. In, in New Jersey. And then he became so well known, he came over to New York and started working radio and doing things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't a short uphill, uh, it wasn't a short uh, rise to the top. It took him a while, you know. He had to do his stuff. And it was the log cabin, I think, where Harry James came in and saw him and said, come on, come work with my band. Yeah, so. How do I know these things? But you can't remember camel toe. I can't remember <laughs> camel toe. Do da do da. Can't remember camel toe. Yeah, I uh, hmm. yeah. I do remember moose uh, <laughs> moose knuckle. <laughs> moose. <laughs> oh, see where my preoccupation is. Anyway, uh. um, so um, uh, let's see here. So we have Ohio represented tonight twice, in also in the form of Josh. Uh, Josh, uh, anything you want to talk about at all? Uh, I don't know if there's anything in particular. I didn't really have any news the last two days. Uh, yeah. My wife yeah. was in an accident. So, what? Uh, oh, no. What? What happened? Uh, what happened? Uh, she fell down at work um, carrying something and tripped over a box. and oh. She fell down on her side and broke some bones and uh, stuff like that. So that take her to the hospital, so I had to leave work and go there and then uh, get her home. Then I had to take her back out today for some orthopedic stuff. And I mean, she's home and everything. Is she going to be okay? Is she going to be okay? But, yeah, yeah, it'll be okay. You know, like yeah. the stuff that wasn't broken, she was just all bruised up on that side and like she couldn't drive, you know, couldn't really, <clears throat> wasn't walking very well and everything. So, uh, so I didn't really, I didn't really get any news or anything. And then I kind of had to work from home today and, do a lot of my computer stuff and everything for work and i was just busy as heck so i didn't really have any news i mean i i knew biden had his press conference and i saw some of the you know like tweets or headlines and short little bits about it but nothing major uh i saw georgia pass their voting rights do you know what we what we it says on voting rights what it says yeah. we are going to pass now in new york city uh they yep. announced today that they have finally come to a accord on the legalization of marijuana of cannabis in New York State, uh, and, and they figure, hey, you know, we, we uh, uh, Cuomo's been wanting to do it for years because, I mean, how are you going to get women to f women to fuck you unless you have some pot? No. <laughs> but um, uh, no, he uh, he he has wanted it for years because he feels it would add to the coffers, the state coffers, mm -hmm. financially, and right now we need it. Because this COVID thing has knocked our, our whole budget for a loop. So he finally got convinced them that this was a good thing to do. And I think today they voted that they're going to make it, uh, make it legal. So in California, they used that same idea to legalize it. Mm -hmm. And they legalized it. And the state has not made a whole lot of money on it tax-wise because there's a lot of pot growers that don't want to get known because it's still against the law federally. 
And so when they, you know, like the, the marijuana dispensaries in California, they can't deal with banks because they're federally insured. And so they got to figure out. I believe, I believe that's about to be done away with. I know they had that problem. Right. They had that problem in, so. in, in Colorado. That was a big problem. And what these people had to do oh, yeah. is go out and buy more safes than they could fit in a, in a, in a store yep. just to you keep bet. the money. And then they'd have higher armed guards to, you know, yeah, sit well, there that, and that's protect a problem the money. Here too, what so happened was, guards, though, they did find a place finally to put their money, and I think so of the growers in California and so of the stores, and that's credit unions. Credit unions can take the money, yeah. and they are not regulated by the federal government, at least <laughs> like the banks are. What they've argued about is that banks are federally regulated, and because federally it is illegal, you can't use a bank to put the money in, but uh, the uh, credit unions are okay. So that's what they're doing to protect their money in So when, in this, Colorado. when this first happened, they were looking for people that could carry a gun concealed, and they were offering big bucks to those people to stand guard. Yep. But yep. in California, like a lot of states, drugs and guns don't go well together. So um, the money isn't worth it to me. Well, well you say drugs and guns don't go well together but once this is legalized you can't put it in the same category yeah. with other drugs it, you that's know right. it it doesn't that's become a dangerous commodity that's my thought yeah that's my thought i mean the war on drugs hasn't worked in this country so you should legalize these drugs and do things differently well you should have a war against things you can have a war against you can't have a war against a weed you know and i I've, I've i've said before that i felt that this uh, here, here was a good example. A while back, they said, uh, "Do you know how much money uh, comes up from Colombia every year? How, many, how much money we spend uh, in buying stuff from Colombia?" You know, they said several billion dollars, or I don't know, however billions of dollars it was. And uh, but we're going to fight it. We're going to put all our backbone against it. We're going to re. We're going to arm up the uh, government. We're going to send all our our our. Uh, Narcs down there to just squash uh, the Colombian drug trade. Well, they weren't able to do it. They were so we spent twenty-seven billion dollars when we could have taken twenty billion dollars and given it to the Colombian narcos and said, "Here, here's twenty billion. Don't get in, Don't send any more our way. Okay, we're making it worth your while. You're not going to lose any money. We could have bought them off cheaper." Yeah then it, it cost us to interdict it. We were, we've were we always been stupid in the way we've handled this problem. That's you know? for sure. You know? And uh, it also goes back to something we were talking about last night, and that's the fact that a lot of police departments have people who are making good salaries to fight drugs, and it, is it in their vested interest really to eliminate the drug trade altogether. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like they're, they're well, lively. Well, it, 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 yeah. The argument was this. There is more money being made off of the interdiction of drugs yeah. than on the drugs themselves. Yeah. Okay? And that it has become an industry in which, uh, you know, if we did away with drugs, we might do away with, I think it was estimated, I don't know what percentage of the crime out there, but it was over 20%, 25% of the crime. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. if we legalized it all, that would mean that I guess we could get rid of 20 to 25% of the police force. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, I, I, but I, I, what, what I'm saying is legalizing it, they, they did that, by the way, in, uh, is it in uh, Oregon now? That it's, it, every drug is legal. Heroin, everything. Yeah. Decriminalized. <laughs> uh, and I think they're going to find that it's, it, it's going to help the problem because people who have a problem are going to be more visible. So maybe you can interdict and help them, okay? And um, it's just, you're just not going to be spending all that money on interdiction. I got a just sort of off topic, but a general observation. Mm -hmm. when, when, you know, when heroin addicts, what they'll do in my neighborhood anyway, is they'll stand, they'll, they'll go into like a trance and then they'll stand and start bending over and then they start twisting, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll stand, they'll stand there twisted up like that, bent over for like hours. And then they, 
continually do that, and then they, they screw their backs all up so they can't walk straight anymore, and they have to walk all like this. It's really... Well, I, what I said years ago was, if you ever noticed heroin addicts, they never seem to fall to the ground. Yeah. They'll start going, mm, 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 and just as you think they're about ready to fall to the ground, they pop right back up again. You know? yeah. so heroin, heroin, like all narcotics, are a depressant, mm -hmm. and a lot of heroin addicts get a little too much heroin in them, and they start with the police or what they call nodding out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. that's that's what happens. They're falling asleep and about ready to crash, and they'll wake themselves back up and realize that they're about ready to fall on the ground, and yeah. they're fine for a few minutes until they start yeah. nodding yeah. down. And then they go down again. Yeah. yeah. So yep. I I said if you don't want to ever fall down, take heroin. <laughs> You know, no, that hurts. It keep you, it keeps you standing up. But anyway, all I'm saying is, is that we've spent way too much money interdicting right. drugs when we could probably save a lot of money by not interdicting it, and also have a more palatable way of solving the problems of drugs. Because yeah, I agree. Not, then I you know agree who you. is a heroin addict, and if they want help, they'll they'll be willing to ask for help easier when they know they're not going to be arrested for it. You know. Go to a place where people could watch them. To make sure they don't stand there like a weeping willow. Yeah, know? exactly. No. What do you think? I mean, I would be fine with mm -hmm. the complete legalization and then simply taking all that money and all those personnel and just simply redeploying them to yeah. enforcing, you know, for example, the laws on, you know, weapons. Mm -hmm. yep. And, you know, what Republican could really argue with that because they're always saying, oh, we don't need any more gun laws. We just need to enforce the ones that are on the books. Well, then let's, you know, let's well, start doing that. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, if you work for the DEA, congratulations. You now work for the ATF. Well, yeah, you know, you know I, I often have a, you know how I'm, I'm against guns, Josh. Uh, and I'm, I, I would like to stop them from being sold and owned and used and all of that. Okay, and uh, Alan's going apoplectic now as I'm saying this, but the point is, is that there's another part of me that goes, I don't want to make them illegal, because then all of a sudden we have the same problem we have with drugs. Uh, something that's illegal is not manageable. Well, and then okay. I, I guess so. I would be fine with, like I said, though, you know, just deploying them to enforcing the laws that we do have, like not going out and rounding them up or anything like that, but rounding up the illegal ones. And just stepping up enforcement for the laws that we have in place for buying them. Like, we don't even, we wouldn't even have to change anything. Yeah. We would just simply become more strict about it, yeah. you know? I mean, a cops shouldn't want people to have illegal guns either. I mean, you know, I mean, if you're not supposed to own it, you're not supposed to own it. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I think that's what I said last night was if the police or the government or whatever, whoever you want to say, if they spent a tenth as much time worrying about illegal weapons as they did worrying about who can get a fucking Percocet or a Vicodin in this country. I mean, you know, gun laws are like paper thin, like two pages. The, I mean, the rules and regulations for how a doctor can give you an opioid in this country, the, the fucking book is this goddamn thick. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, only have it for this many days. And then you got to this blah, blah. I mean, you got to see this doctor, and, and then they test you, and blood tests, and urine tests, and hair samples. Make sure you're taking. I mean, it, it's it's crazy, but I have like a drug. I said, I but have if you want to, yeah. if you, but can I have a weapon? Like I said, well, they're they're on two. I have a, I have a drug. And they come with free bullets this week. I have a drug I use called pregabalin, which is uh, is a generic Lyrica, which is also another version of another drug called gabapentin. Now, I got gabapentin, and I just took gabapentin, and I get a couple of bottles a month, and nobody ever asked me, no problems, whatever. Now, with the pergabalin, it's a controlled mm. substance. Now, mm. I asked my doctor the other day who prescribed it to me, why is it a prescribed substance? He says, beats me, it's the same as gabapentin, just a little more powerful. Yeah. But somehow they decide this drug will be a controlled substance, this won't. And therefore, the ones that are controlled substances are much harder for you to lay. Yeah, the Federal you, Control Drug Board and all that has nothing better to do than think up new laws to control. You know, well, how do they keep themselves in business? Absolutely. If, that, if, if a, drugs a, weren't a, illegal, they'd be but, out of work, too. 
I think I think if they got rid of illegal drugs, if you were able to get them legally, like somebody I think you said, Alex, mm -hmm. that um, you can get help or something if you needed it without fear of law enforcement. And I also think that it, you know, a lot of people are murdered in this country over yeah. drug sales and being high and stupid on drugs. Yeah, I, w I was going to point that out as well. That not only would you be able to save police from just specifically being assigned to DEA and and, and you know, you know, right there and all such programs, also the ancillary crime that gets committed in the pursuit of drugs would absolutely. Would Yep. Haven't we learned any lessons from prohibition? You know, when we when we repealed prohibition, the black market was suddenly, you know, it was expunged. It was gone. And yep. so, you know, we, we haven't learned that, I guess. Well, I think the other thing that's sad is how easily pot now is being legalized everywhere, where there was a time in this country when I was growing up where if you got busted for pot, you went to jail for 20 years. Well, there's, that's, that stuff's still going on, though, you know I mean? In I mean, I, I read this headlines four or five days ago and I roll my eyes at it. I'm really kind of upset or not really upset, but like disappointed in, in Joe Biden over it is apparently they fire five people for admission that they yes. had used marijuana yeah. in the past, in the past, not even at work <laughs> or since they've been hired in the past. Like yep. what? Like I and by the I'm way, I'm working here way. at the White House and I'm doing a really good job and Someone walks up and says, have you ever smoked marijuana? And I'm like, yeah, man, this one time at band camp. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're fucking, you're fired. I mean, like, yeah, I couldn't figure that you? one out because to begin with in Washington, D.C., where's marijuana legal? Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah. You know, now, I mean, I, I didn't read a shit ton of details about it. Like, and it wasn't that they were, it, it wasn't, was. I, don't, I don't even care. I mean, it, it wasn't it, at it, fucking work. If they, they did, don't yeah. care in Washington, D.C. either. Look at Marion Barry. If they did it on, yeah. if they did it on the job, okay, I, I might I mean, have an argument, right. of, you know, for it. Hey, because you don't want them drinking booze on the job either, okay? Right. But they weren't. This is what wasn't what they were accused of, you know. Uh, I so. mean, they had just admitted that they had used, uh, and, and it wasn't even like uh, quote uh, quote you know illicit drugs. It was my other thing was it was specifically marijuana. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like they were like, yeah, you know, I was a crack addict or I used some. I mean, like, even if they were like, so what? You're reformed now. Good for you. I mean, I thought that's what we wanted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You have to. You can't work for the Biden administration if you smoked marijuana before. I mean, yeah. in the liberal circles, it's going to be a small fucking. How do you I'll think the vice president like, got through law school on marijuana? <laughs> probably. Well, I mean, I just, it, 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 I think that it, it, it's just sad that there was a time when people went to jail for 20 years for this. <laughs> and now it's legal. Yeah, well, when I started, uh, marijuana in California was still a felony, any amount. Brian's been a little quiet tonight, as has Kevin. How are both of you tonight? Hmm. Stoned. Huh? <laughs> well, we're all sitting here waiting for Robert's question. No, we're not, Alan. Be quiet. <laughs> Well, do you have a quick question you could throw at us, uh, Robert? What, do I amuse you? Is that what yes, you do. Oh, Jesus Christ. Do you Give have a, a break. Do you have a question tonight at all? Sure. Uh, here, let's throw out one question. <laughs> Jesus. We'll find out something else illegal about uh, yeah. about Jeff. All right. Have you have oh. you ever have you ever shit or pissed your pants? Honestly, shit or pissed your pants. <laughs> Come on. In case people no. have just have joined, in that? case people just have joined us, these are the really hot Why topics that we have I ever what again peed shit or shit my pants? The okay. answer is no. Not no? figuratively, really? literally. Really? literally. I sharted. Sharted these things, you know. Well, sharding is a form of shitting in your yeah. pants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well yeah, then me. That's shitting in your pants. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. Uh how about how about you, uh, Alan? Oh yeah. I mean, anybody that doesn't say that they've had an accident, I mean, I don't, you know, yeah. I don't. But the older you get, you can't trust a fart. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They go, you go, I just, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what did I just do? <laughs> yeah. You bet. You bet. Uh, uh, how about you, Charlie? Well, it depends. <laughs> What do you mean it depends? Yes. You either peed uh, yeah, your yeah. pants or shit yeah. your I pants. Mean, everybody has. I mean, like you said, you, you think you're going to fart and all of a sudden. 
I've been so sick, it's coming out both ends. Yeah. How about uh, a, how about a younger guy like Brian? Yeah, I, uh, now you bring it up. Yeah, I think I was on the rush from home and just barely made it. But my pants were down and just boom, and I think it went in the back of the toilet. Yeah. How about you, Kevin? Well, we had a good conversation going, and I think I just did right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Jeff? Too hard of a left turn there. No, Jeff. How about Josh? How about you? This is... <laughs> no, I I'm, I'm, don't think so. How about you? How, oh, I want to hear Tony. Tony? <laughs> well, the only time that I came close is we went, me and my brother and my mother and my dad was like, we went to the Italian restaurant in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. and That'll do I, it to you. you. Know, and when we came home, we had the hors d'oeuvres, but the sauce went through me. And my father had to go to the bathroom first, so he was in there, and I was holding it, and we both got diarrhea, but we both, I got out in time. I was banging on the door, you gotta get out. And he says, I can't, and all I heard was, it was coming out. And my <laughs> had the How about you, soul. Scott, you, our newbie here, Scott? Well, I've sharted, but you know, I had a, I just turned 50, so I had my colonoscopy for the very first time. Yeah. I tell you, the time from leaving my house to driving to the hospital, it was close. Really? I was really because I worried. usually yes. found that whenever I took all that stuff, by the time it wore off enough that it was time for me to go to go to the thing, it, I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't no, have I, anything in me. No, I had to take the stuff from, I think, 3 in the afternoon to 11 at night. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. and take right. it for two hours. Right. And wow. then wait two hours and then go. But I tell you, it was close. Wow. I, it still wasn't all out of me. Oh, they must do it different there. Yeah, yeah, really. You should be able to do your last course of that stuff at the hospital. Yeah, after yeah. the yeah. after like the third course, the third glass of stuff, I'm like wondering why do I need to do the rest of the gallon? Well, yeah. I, 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 I am. Then what did the doctor tell you? What did the doctor tell you, Alex? Come on. What? After you did the colonoscopy, when you took well, the he, stuff, he, he, he said doctor, he right? said he was amazed how clean I was. Yes. Oh. And what I did, I never take that the gallon of stuff. I take the citric magnesium citrate. Yeah. And you take a bottle of that, and then you take a couple of, I think, laxatives with it, and uh, uh, then all of a sudden uh, everything in you, including, I think, your liver, falls out of your ass. And uh, then uh, the next morning you do some more, and it just clears out what's left, you know. It's nice to have some kind of, like, Vaseline or something because it gets really rough down there. Well, yeah. after it's, it's, being on the it, toilet all it, night, that, baby wipes. Th that's baby it, wipes. Th there you go. The, that's no fun. However, the actual colonoscopy is fun because they put you out and they give you this nice twilight drug that kind of like a, there's a slight bing and you just feel great. And then the next yeah, thing you know, the doctor's looking out. down at yeah. you, going, "Well." I said, when are you going to start? And he goes, it's all over. Mm. You know. Yeah. 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 And I got the fall. drug that Michael Jackson OD'd on. Well, that's yeah, what... That's what all that was that's the best true. sleep I've ever had in my life. No wonder. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I didn't really know that I slept because it's kind of like somebody has taken uh, your life and edited yeah. 20, 25 yeah. minutes out of it. You know? Right. It, yeah, it, they, they said I was awake the whole time. They were asking questions and all this stuff. And then... You, then all of a sudden your memory's gone. You don't remember. Yeah. It. yeah. No concept of time. Yeah. Right. So the 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 drug you're talking about is called Versed. It's in the Valium family. It's a uh, Valium is long acting. So Versed is short acting, quick duration. But the one side effect of Versed and the reason why they use it is it causes what they call conscious sedation. And so. Yeah, you're conscious and you're awake, but you're you don't remember anything. We didn't want a technical description mm. once we were saying how good the other stuff felt. Yeah, well, just ask me. I know a little bit about drugs. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Good information. But, uh, I know. I, I uh, you know. Um, there but, you go. But, uh, 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 oh, we did. We didn't get an answer out of John Larkin. <laughs> John, have you ever uh, pooped your pants or peed your pants? <laughs> huh? I've been so sick. It's coming out both ends a few times. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have I, shit I, coming out of your mouth. What's up with that? I had a guy that worked with us at, at, at Sirius XM, who um, 
he got on the subway. Garrett, the was that his Garrett, name? Garrett was coming yeah. to work. You know the story. Remember, he, he would tell the story, and we just were dying when he told the story because mm -hmm. he was on the F train or something like that. And all of a sudden, he had this urge. He really had to go. You know, he had the, the he felt the trots coming on, and he, he didn't know what to do. So he got off at a stop, and then he couldn't go any further. He went into the corner of the train station oh. and unloaded right there. Yep. And then uh, he put his pants back on, and some of it remained in his pants. And then he came to Sirius, and there was an executive shower that none of us were allowed to use, but he knew where it was, and he went in there. And he took a shower, and his pants were wet for hours. You know. It didn't smell too But imagine either. being in that kind of situation where yeah. you're on the subway train, and and they years ago did away with toilets in the uh, train stations. Yeah. Right? They just yeah. don't exist. That and candy machines were taken out, too. Because uh, who wants to eat a candy bar that's been sitting in a machine you know. in the subway? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that was, that, was a, that was a big that deal. That was a great question, Robert. It was a very good mm -hmm. question. Well, it's a very human question because we've all, I think, gone through it, except Josh, who's perfect. <laughs> and, and, and it never happened to him. And it just happened to Kevin while we were talking. So that made life, uh, <laughs> life good, too. And yeah. I haven't gotten up yet either. <laughs> oh, Lord. oh boy, uh, yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, uh, getting back to the whole drug <clears throat> thing, I think that we've dealt with it very badly over the years, and it yeah. was all because mm -hmm. of a guy by the name of Harry J. Anslinger, who was the head of the uh, uh, FBI's Department of Narcotics and whatever. He's the guy that came up with the idea that marijuana should be illegal. Because he wanted a job for life. And he did it. And that was his job. He was the one that went after Billie Holiday. If you go see that document, that uh, movie about Billie Holiday, they portray Harry J. Anslinger, who was just an absolute, he was the guy that made life miserable for a lot of people. Because drugs should have never been made illegal. They should have been made uh, 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 a, a medical problem. I agree with that if you want to talk about certain drugs being a medical problem, but they shouldn't have been illegal. Too many people went to jail for all of that for too many Absolutely. years. You know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. And, and if, the, if the drugs didn't ruin their lives, the arrest did. Absolutely. Know. What were you going to say, Charlie? Was that perfect? Were you going to say something? No. no. Oh, oh, I thought no, you I were... was going to say so. I thought one of the reasons was du DuPont thought hemp was a threat to nylon. And no, they were behind no. some of the propaganda no. against marijuana, or no? No, no. As a matter no. of fact, the only thing that hemp was uh, was was hemp. Hemp was what they made rope out of. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, what they did is during World War II. There's a quick story. Uh, then we got to go because I got to play the theme here. But uh, during World War II, uh, they just they we had to make hemp because it all came from the Middle East and it was hard to get it here. So we we started hemp growing hemp plants in the Midwest. And after the war, it seems that every summer, the highways in Kansas would be strewn on either side with these hemp bushes, or as we know them, cannabis. And people would just stop by the side of the road and chop the stuff down and take it home. <laughs> you know? uh, but uh, they finally got rid of all that stuff. So you can climb rope, and then 20 minutes later, smoke the rope. That's right. That's right. exactly. Hey, listen, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Uh, uh, oh, oh, geez. You do that one more time. I'm going to kill you. That's <laughs> it's just. Hey, it's so that, cute. It's so cute. Those are the faces he puts up when he's about ready to shit his pants. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. The funniest remark of the night, by the way. Let me just uh, say that. No Jeff, thank said. you. Josh, thank you. Thank you to Tony. Thank you. Will you call us again, Scott, please? Sure. We love having you on. Tomorrow and, would be a good time. And, and of course, <laughs> <laughs> and John Larkin, thank you so much. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. There they go. All of them. Uh, let me get rid of them here. And uh, there they go. Boom. 
They're gone. Uh, hey, listen, uh, we're uh, back again tomorrow night. Uh, next is Jack Bishop. He's got the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at Gavinet Live. We'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask for yourself and everybody else. Bye-bye.